Hey there, fellow students from HMSL 6400. And congratulations are in order for making it through fall semester 2020. We are BGSU Athletics Group, and this is our problem statement. Economics has been the greatest challenge of our entertainment values at BGSU Athletics, like many, many other families, businesses, institutions, governments, et cetera, around the US and around the world. Uh, now, our football program at BGSU has not performed particularly well in the past few years, but that is not nearly the biggest challenge um, that we are undergoing. So the division one programs we have at BGSU, where revenue sports include both basketballs, men's and women's, football, ice hockey. And then there is a portfolio of non-revenue sports like gymnastics, swimming and diving, um, uh, tennis, et cetera. The revenue sports consume the greatest amount of budget, time, resources, energy, staffing, et cetera. And the flip side of that is that they generate by far the most uh, income of the sports and in also fan interest, donor interest, alumni interest from around the area, the community, the school, uh, traffic to the school, marketing, visibility to the school, donor enthusiasm, um, fan and alumni uh, support from around the state, around the country, around the world. But all these things have been mitigated dramatically uh, with uh, lack of attendance and ticketing and uh, exposure and competitions. Uh, all have been mitigated for all the sports, um, revenue and non-revenue uh, by COVID-19. For our next section, we'll be covering entertainment values and competitive balance. Our three categories are BGSU's recruiting, BGSU player development, and MAC competitive balance. When it comes to BGSU's athletics and the monies associated with the program, BGSU ultimately struggles to compete uh, with some of the other big Division I schools, such as Ohio State and Michigan. Uh, mainly only receiving appropriated funds due to its size or population. When compared to all Division I schools, BGSU is not necessarily on the lower end of the financial scale. However, BGSU does not compete at the highest level of league competition. BGSU's source of entertainment values include assessment and talent identification, recruitment, and development. BGSU could consider sports teams' talents levels as such, poor in terms of football, underwhelming in women's basketball, good and excellent in men's basketball, women's soccer, and ice hockey. The NCAA hosts over 32 conferences and up to 130 teams participate. BGSU, however, does compete within its own conference and stands out among other MAC teams. As BGSU is an institution for academics, the decline in recruitment for the star athlete has had a serious effect on its athletic program. Due to the changing of college athletic culture, BGSU as an academic institution, core values are to support the academic needs of its student athletes. So when it comes to recruiting, the coaching staff is very important. Um, they have to make sure they're saying the right things and that they're really persuading the athlete to go to that school. There are several factors that this depends on. School and location, facilities, community sport, 
comparative athletic resources, academics, and history of success all play a vital part in recruiting. Um, recruits and coaches need to seek more than anything the right fit for themselves, their families, and their future. This can include what the athlete can afford um, if that school actually has their education that they're looking for, um, and so on. Um, this impacts both, both the quality of the job as well as the ability to attract athletes, which impacts the quality of the job. So if you're a coach and you're getting these top athletes, then more athletes that are good are going to want to come to that school for that sport and if you're the one who's really upgrading a program then you're going to get a good payout in the end and then other considerations that a recruit might may might um Other considerations um, that might be considered by a recruit is the community. Um, you know, is the community big? Is it like a hometown environment? I know here at BGSU, it's very like homey. When people come here, they don't feel like they're far away from home. So that can make a big difference for someone who's like a homebody. Next, we have player development. Um, so BGSU, really their values are to support the academic needs of its student athletes. A way by doing this is possibly providing weekly study hours for athletes just to make sure we fit that in with their busy schedules that they do have time to do their schoolwork because at the end of the day that's what they're there for to go to school and get an education. Um, Coaches need to make sure that their athletes are getting the proper rest at night so, it are, so their bodies are fully wet, rested so they are ready to go for the next day. And next, increase player strengths. Um, so just making sure that athletic trainers and um, personal trainers are there strength conditioning coach are really setting out the proper programs for the athletes um, to help them get better as a player and also make their bodies not have that many injuries. So when it came to competitive balance, obviously since BGSU athletics is not a league, um, we actually decided to look at the MAC conference um, since that's what B, that's what BG uh, participates in for almost all their sports. Um, just to to look at the competitive balance within that league. Um, so obviously the the MAC conference um, is a mid major conference, so it's a little bit different from your Power Five conferences, who sometimes have you know some schools who are a little bit more dominant than other than others um, over the years. Um, so most of the MAC schools, such as BGSU, are, are pretty comparable when it comes to size, athletic talent, and then also winning percentage. Um, so with that um, winning percentage, um, that's a great way to tell, you know, how well the competitive balance is within that league. Um, you know, if you look at the winning percentages of each of the schools um, and you, there's really no, um, you know, front runner or no indication of which team's going to win um, versus um, another team. Um, that's usually, that usually means that there's better compa competitive balance within that league. Um, so for this example, um, specifically, um, we kind of looked at um, competitive balance within the MAC um, and then MAC football specifically. So um, competitive balance within, within football, um, I found a, you know, a chart um, with, that had all the winning percentages of all the uh, MAC schools um, since they joined the league. Um, so when looking at that chart, you can see that a majority of the teams um, fall within the 400 to 600 um, winning percentage, um, with Toledo being the highest at 610, and then uh, Kent being the lowest at 312. But a majority of the teams did fall within that 400 to 600 winning percentage range. Uh, BG, for example, theirs was um, 417. 
Uh, so when you look at these numbers, like I mentioned earlier, in order to tell if there's good competitive balance, you want to see that a majority of the schools have around that 500 um, winning percentage, which essentially means that going into a game, you're not necessarily going to know who's going to win or, or who's going to lose. Um, and obviously this shows that within the MAC, there's not really been a, you know, a super dominant team throughout the years uh, when it comes to football. Um, you know, and we, we picked that sport just because it's, you know, the biggest sport within the MAC. Um, so to give a good indication of um, the overall, like, um, competitive balance within that league itself. Um, so then moving on to uh, the BCG matrix that we came up for um, BGSU Athletics, um, we kind of looked at some entertainment peripheral sources. Um, so with that, you know, we looked specifically at the, uh, the different facilities um, that, you know, BGSU Athletics operates. Um, uh, such as like the Stroh Center, the Ice Arena, and then the Dewey Perry Stadium, as well as the other ones uh, in the bottom there, which we'll get into on the next slide. Um, but then we also looked at, um, you know, sources such as like the Falcon Club, um, just merchandising, and also broadcasting as well, um, just to see, you know, where they, where they would land on this uh, matrix here. So getting into the matrix uh, that we created, um, you know, we have the Stroh Center as the star. We decided to put them as the star uh, mainly because, you know, this is a, Stroh Center is a brand new facility. Um, it's host to a lot of different events um, that go on throughout the year. Um, you know, it's host to men's and women's basketball, uh, which is very popular, um, very popular sport within BG. Um, also does women's volleyball as well. And then, you know, host things such as concerts, um, you know, graduation commencement ceremonies, um, then others, some other community related events. Um, and then, so with that, we also had the Falcon Club in that star category, uh, mainly because, you know, it brings in a lot of money uh, from donations, um, which is very helpful, you know, to the athletic department. Um, overall, it's got a large, a large reach within the BG area. Um, so that's why it's higher on that, um, you know, market growth area. Um, and it continues to grow each year. Um, and, you know, obviously has a lot of market share with, you know, being a, a big part um, in this, the Bowling Green area. Uh, going down to Cash Cow, we put the Ice Arena as the Cash Cow, um, kind of similar to the, the Stroh Center. However, um, it's not used as much as the, as the Stroh Center is at times. Um, so the, in size wise for the arena, it's, it actually ranks in the top 25 for, you know, all Division One hockey um, facilities. Um, but, you know, it also hosts, you know, multiple other events during the year, uh, such as learn to skate programs, you know, youth hockey, high school hockey, um, and then obviously the Falcon hockey games. Um, so it does, does get a lot of usage during the year. However, it is really only open, um, you know, from August until, um, until May each year. So that's why we kind of put it in that cash cow area. Uh, also in the cash cow area, we had the merchandising, um, mainly because it, it we think that it does have a lot of, you know, a large market share within this area, obviously BG, um, you know, there's not really a lot of competition um, until you kind of reach like Toledo area. So basically within, you know, this, this part of Ohio, um, you know, it has basically all that market share. Um, however, um, it is in there because the, when, in terms of market growth, there's not a huge, you know, amount of market growth that it can, that it can reach. Um, but it is, you know, an important part of athletics and does bring in, you know, a good chunk of money for, for the, um, you know, the athletic um, program. Um, question mark, moving on to that. Uh, we had the Dwight Perry Stadium, mainly because, you know, we feel that there's a lot of potential with, with the, um, the facility, uh, basically because it has a lot of room to grow. Um, obviously, it can hold up to 24,000 fans, which is, you know, a lot. Um, however, we just, we just feel like it's maybe under – underutilized a little bit um, since it's, it's a majority of the time it's just used for, you know, for Falcon football games. Um, so, but uh, in that question mark, we also had broadcasting in there mainly because um, there's, you know, it has a good, a good amount of market growth um, and continues to grow. However, when it comes to market share, you know, BG um, in terms of like, you know, top division one, um, programs even within the area and within the state for example um it's not fully up there so um obviously that has you know if it gained a little bit more market share you know it could move over to a star but um it's still kind of lower on that market share area um and then moving down into dogs um basically we had kind of all the other facilities within there like the rec center the pool 
uh, the soccer field, baseball and, and softball fields, as well as the, the tennis courts there, uh, mainly because they're, they're facilities that don't really get a lot of, get a whole lot of usage during the year other than just, you know, the games that it hosts. Um, and they, even so, they still don't bring in a whole lot of revenue when compared to the other, the facilities that we uh, talked about earlier. Um, so next, we're going to move on to um, the SWOT analysis. I'm going to talk about a SWOT analysis now for BGSU athletics. First, the strengths. And just BGSU athletics serves as a, a bridge for student athletes between, you know, between campus uh, academics and administrators. Um, and uh, the whole goal is to help the student athletes be able to successfully compete and represent the university. Uh, strengths for sure include specifically uh, student recruitment, being able to draw athletes, student athletes from around the country, around the world, around Ohio, uh, may help contribute to student retention at the university. Obviously marketing the school by TV exposure, uh, activities going on uh, at campus, uh, travels for teams, um, that kind of exposure. And uh, the access to campus near populated area, highly populated between Detroit, Toledo, Columbus, Cleveland, all very accessible. And uh, then the, from being a member of the MAC, uh, finances, uh, revenues coming as a member of that, at that conference. So continuing the SWOT analysis for weaknesses, BGSU athletics, uh, there have been some serious limitations and budget cuts, uh, again, due to COVID-19 um, since March. Um, these deficits could continue and uh, potentially threaten discontinuation of, of sport teams. Uh, that is a reality with the mid-majors right now in this country. So some things that uh, have been a weakness for BGSU athletics include downsizing the athletic staff, uh, and limiting some scholarships, including out of state or international student athletes. But again, the most uh, severe would be uh, cutting sports teams. Now, the opportunities BGSU athletics has include some significant, significant positives. Uh, BGSU has operated in a arena of NCA compliance. Uh, they've had academic integrity, fiscally responsible, and have had great diversity in the BGSU various sport programs. Uh, opportunities include beyond that to increase to target families in Northwest Ohio. Um, maybe some of the smaller towns that are uh, within a 20 minute drive, 30 minute drive, uh, not uh, or outside maybe the, the Toledo area, but more uh, out in the rural market uh, and encourage uh, athletic amateurism has always been a positive at BGSU. Institutional control, again, an NCA compliance uh, theme there and um, have uh, BGSU's done a great job with eligibility and APR progress. So last part of the SWOT analysis threats, uh, potential circumstances that could uh, threaten BGSU athletics in one way or another, social inequities uh, could come up uh, uh, these days uh, is certainly a, a topic of concern. Uh, environmental changes, again, back to COVID, uh, potentially, if the school goes to more of an online format, uh, could change the university traffic and income 
uh, revenue streams, et cetera. Um, if the MAC were to realign or our conferences realign, that could uh, you know, be a, an issue, a challenge here at mid-major level. Um, if there would be a de decreased student athlete experience, a decline uh, there would be obviously a threat. Um, or if there's lower revenue stream created by uh, poor performance in revenue sports, and we have a decline in marketing, uh, TV, TV revenues, uh, uh, ticket sales, et cetera, would be another threat to BGSU athletics. And of course, the other surrounding power five schools in our area uh, always, you know, it can impact our market share here at BGSU, uh, competing uh, fans, uh, interest, uh, the uh, headlines, et cetera. Okay, so this slide focuses on structural and policy change um, within the BGSU athletic department. This is, we focused on individual and team talents and competitive balance. So one thing that we'd have to keep in mind is focusing on development of strength and conditioning programs for these athletes, just to ensure that their health is coming first, uh, not making sure we're not wearing them down. So having good programs set in that are built for each individual athlete for each individual sport that there is. And then when it comes to the recruitment, um, recruits really just want to hear what athletes have to say about the sport program because um, they're the ones that are going through it every day. Yeah, the coach may know, but they don't know the actual real extent to what athletes have to go through day in and day out with being a student athlete. And then also um, creating built, creating programs built within the department to help better their education for the athletes. Um, so one way to do this is having academic coaches set aside for like five athletes that they're taking care of. So that way no athlete feels left out or they feel like they're being a bother because the academic coach has too much thrown at them. So just really making sure that we're focusing on those athletes' academic standings. Um, when it comes to competitive balance, we just have to look at the coaching staff, look at history and um, doing background checks and really making sure that they're taking care of the athletes that they need.